30 years ago, when the stars were bright, the twin moons were new, and the wind was howling through the trees of the Tenmar forest, a litter of Khajiit were born. There were two of them, brothers named Svir and Jazir, and from the very first, they did not get along. Jazir was the elder and stronger of the pair, but Svir had a sharp mind and an eye for business. All siblings squabble, that's just the natural order of things. The world is a harsh place, and often a cantankerous brother or sister can still be more trustworthy than a stranger. It's for this reason that when Svir decided to start a shipping company, he made his older brother his business partner. Travelling by boat is a faster and much safer way of getting around the island continent of Tamriel than by roads, especially in the troubled days at the end of the Third Era. It was for this reason that Svir wanted to start the business. Jazir, on the other hand, didn't care so much about the money, but he did want to see more of the world, and working on a ship seemed like a convenient way to do it. Thusly, the two brothers went about their days. With only one ship between them, Svir would captain the vessel to wherever he felt the greatest profit could be made, and Jazir enjoyed the ride, spending his evenings having fun and causing trouble in port before casting off in the morning. It was a grand and consequence-free existence for him, but as the years went on, he began to chafe under the leadership of his younger, more sensible brother. He felt as though he had to do all the real work, but still had no say in where they went. Naturally, where they went was where the most lucrative cargo and passengers could be found, but this didn't always mean somewhere exotic and interesting. The final straw came when Svir had them operating in Morrowind. Jazir hated the place. The vile and bigoted Dark Elves and their barbaric culture were bad enough, but it was the slave markets in every port they stopped in that got his hackles up the most. Jazir had a short temper, this was no secret. He lacked the icy patience of his brother in these matters, and he got in a number of fights with the locals, forcing Sphere to bail him out time and again at great expense. Their relationship thus frayed to the breaking point, the brothers found themselves operating out of the small port of Kool on Vardenfell's northern coast. Sphere had reliable information that the East Empire Company was soon to set up a mining colony on the nearby island of Solstheim, and Sphere's plan was to ferry passengers and cargo to and from the freezing wasteland, while demand was still high. For Jazir, however, this was too much to put up with. Between Cool and Fort Frostmoth, there was absolutely nothing interesting to do except slowly freeze to death in his cabin. The final straw came while making the crossing in the middle of a storm, when Jazir's prized elephant ivory skooma pipe was knocked overboard, and he finally snapped. The thunderous row they had in the captain's cabin was almost as loud as the actual storm going on outside, and by the time the ship docked back on Vardenfell, Jazir had packed his things and was ready to leave. On the bright side, the mood had simmered down a bit by then, and while neither brother made any apologies, they did embrace for one last time before going their separate ways. Family is sometimes hard to leave behind, even if they do drive you to the brink of insanity. For his part, Svir continued his shipping business and was ultimately proven right when the ebony mines at Ravenrock opened. Jazir, meanwhile, made his way around the continent, working part-time as a deckhand to pay his way. He enjoyed this for a while, but after a particularly chilly trip to Skyrim, he began to wonder if life wasn't getting a bit... stale. He'd seen every port town worth seeing, and was beginning to wonder if a career change wasn't a bad idea. He'd always been terrible with money, but uh, that only made him want it more. Especially without his brother around to bail him out these days. Perhaps it was time to finally get back on dry land, maybe even see the sands of elsewhere again after all these years. At a tavern in Dawnstar one night, he finished his drink, stepped out into the frigid autumn air, and made his decision. He was going to travel the land for a while, but he was going to sail somewhere warm first, and so this is where our tale truly begins. As Jazir's ship sails into the Cyrodiilic port city of Leowin, where the land is warm and wet, and there are fortunes to be made.
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Oblivion. As someone once commented, I remember recently, I don't remember who it was, but they said it's the comfiest game in the universe, and I tend to agree. Welcome back to yet another Oblivion Let's Play on the channel. Uh, I've done a few of these before. <laughs> Let me think. Uh, there was the original Idris one, and then there was the short-lived Zog one that can was cancelled due to technical problems. Then there's the Arthur one, then there was the Knights of the Nine one. So yeah, we're up to like four now. This would be number five. Um, but I love this game. And every time I think I'm done with it, I end up sort of like about a year or two later thinking, mm, I wouldn't mind playing some more Oblivion again. So I guess that's what we're doing. Um, there will have been, I think, probably some sort of prologue intro thingy before this bit of the video. So you will have watched that, so you'll already know what character we're playing. Uh, so we'll get started, I suppose. Mods in the description of the video. I will list them down there, hopefully in load order, um, including the stuff that's not in the load order at all, like uh, EN Boost and blah, 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 obsy, that kind of thing. Uh, I will get to mods as we, as we encounter them in the game, basically, but it's very similar to the previous mod setups I've used, just with a few additional bits and bobs here and there. Um, so we'll crack on, shall we? Uh, only one warning before we get going, though, which is uh, that the game might crash quite a bit, um, which is not really a problem for you guys, I suppose. It's a problem for me, but uh, the, yeah, the game's probably going to crash quite a bit because I've noticed that ever since I upgraded to Windows 10, between now and the last Oblivion series I did, uh, the game is way more unstable than it was on Windows. On, 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 bleh, bleh. Maybe I should just carry on and play instead of talking. Yeah, anyway, game is more unstable on Windows 10. It's kind of annoying, but nothing I can do about it. New game. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and skip the Patrick Stewart intro cutscene when it pops up. Because it's not relevant to our playthrough. There we go. Brilliant. Right, ladies and gentlemen. Our race is not Imperial. It is Khajiit. However, it's not... It's very specifically... A type of Khajiit. There we go. A Suthe Khajiit. Like this guy. Um, I've got multiple different types of Khajiit in the game, as you can see, because I'm using the Elsewhere mod. So Elsewhere is going to be added to the world map alongside Cyrodiil, which is going to be quite fun, hopefully. Uh, let's see. Let me do the character creation malarkey off-screen, because that might take a while before I can get this looking right. But uh, yeah, suffice to say, using an alternate start mod, as you can see, we're on a boat bound for the city of Leowin in Cyrodiil, um, and not in the Imperial City dungeons. All right, there we go. I think I'm more or less happy with that. Okay, there he is. Looks all right to me, as far as, you know, anthropomorphic cat people go, I suppose. His name is, of course, Jazir, spelt with a J, an apostrophe, an I, and an R, R. There we go. Lovely jubbly. Done. Are you sure you want to be a Khajiit Suthe brackets tabby? Yes. I don't think there's any other kind of Suthe available, so I don't know why they felt the need to put whatever. Food availability in Syria has reverted back to normal. Oh, that'll be a mod thing. Oh, God, yes, we're going to have DLC and mods and stuff all thrown at us at once, and that'll fix follower. Double face bug added. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. Yep, shivering. Oh, an official shivering. Isles patch, oblivion patch, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> were you, were, were, did you have any semblance of immersion? Well, it's gone now. Enjoy. Uh, I said, you know, I, I should probably just do nothing right now until this is finished. Um... Anyway, yeah, here we are. Here's our digs. Got our own cabin on this ship, Haram, which is not bad, is it, really? Didn't have to sleep cramped in with all the rest of the crew. We've got our own fancy little cabin. Oh. With a tapestry. Look at that. Goodness me. Anyway, I think it's all done now. Right, to complete character creation, we fill out the immigration forms. Race, we've just done. Birth signs, next. Now, Jazir was born under the sign of... The That's a good question, actually. I haven't put much thought into this. <laughs> what would be appropriate? I don't, I don't really care about bonuses that much, to be honest with you. I mostly just care about what's narratively appropriate. Lady Mage, Thief, Atronach, Lord, Lover, Ritual, Serpent, Shadow, Steed, Tower. Warrior! Yeah, I think Warrior. So that will give us... Um, 
recover more quickly from fatigue or receive a bonus of 10 points to our strength and endurance attributes. So that's good. Jazeera is a fighter. That's the kind of archetype of character we're going for today. You know, sometimes you do a mage playthrough, sometimes a thief playthrough. This one's a warrior playthrough. Are you sure you want to be born under the sign of the warrior? Yep. Okay. Next, specializations, which is basically our class. I'm going to do custom classes I usually do. Combat specialization. Is uh, attributes going to be strength and... Uh, I think speed. Yeah. Right, our skills. Let's talk through this, shall we? Well, uh, Jazir is skilled with the blade and the axe and the hammer and everything. He's 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 pretty all, pretty much an all rounder when it comes to melee weapons. Doesn't discriminate very much. He uh, he can block as well, obviously. So we'll take the block skill. Um, I I gotta I gotta admit I don't really miss that being a skill. I feel like being able to block successfully should be included with blade or blunt if you ask me but whatever i'm gonna have to waste a skill point on a, a, a skill choice on that i guess um he can do alchemy mostly because jazir has a lot of experience brewing his own booze and creating his own skooma with varying degrees of success but he's 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 he's, he's worst in the arts of making skooma has done it in the past as a side hobby and a way to make a little bit of cash on the side as well. Um, so, therefore, he, he knows the basics of alchemy, effectively. Um, so we'll go with that. Uh, Blade Blunt. Also, he does have a little bit of experience with destruction magic. Um, that's mostly there, folks, to make up for the fact that he doesn't do any stuff with marksman he just can't shoot straight with a bow he's useless at it he's tried it in the past doesn't work didn't work out um so we're going with destruction and there's there's a there's a role play reason for that which is that you know he, he can't shoot straight with a bow um and he also thinks throwing fireballs is kind of cool actually kind of useful being able to throw a fireball if you get into a ship battle with a bunch of pirates actually because you can set their vessel on fire um but there's another reason for that, which is that I didn't want to take Marksman because I am going to take Sneak because he is a Khajiit. He can be sneaky when he wants to. Sometimes discretion is the better part of Valor, and he's well aware of that. So he can be sneaky, and I wanted to very much avoid becoming a stealth archer in this playthrough, so that's why I'm kind of avoiding Marksman like the plague. Um, he, Let's see, how many we've picked so far? One, two, three, four, five, six. We get one more choice. Lamentably. Okay, that's going to be light armor, I think. Yep, going to have to be light armor. That's his armor skill. He's not going to go with heavy armor. I have a personal bias against heavy armor in this game because it makes you run so slow. So I always prefer to play with light armor characters if I can. Uh, yeah, there you go. So sneak, light armor, destruction, blunt block, blade, alchemy. That's what we're going with. Honorable mentions probably go to Speechcraft and Mercantile because those are things I think he would also have experience with based on his background, but unfortunately we only get seven choices. So I could have dropped maybe Blunt or Blade for one of those, but um, I wanted to play a character that for once isn't one or the other. Can you know can pick up a hammer or, or a sword and just be like, yeah, sounds good to me. Instead of just being like, oh no, I couldn't possibly use that axe. I'm a swords only sort of man. I don't. I don't think. Uh, nah. Anyway, adventurer is fine. Create adventurer class. Yep. Done. Sure, you want to be an adventurer? Yes. As you can tell in the background, I got some custom music installed. Speaking of like mods and things, got some custom music installed as as is tradition with my Oblivion playthroughs. I had custom music in the first one, and people enjoyed it, so I kept doing it. Um, Uh, rarely can I give you actually the details of where the music's from because I don't even remember at this point. I've had this music installed for ages. Um, right, social status is the last thing on here. Uh, manual laborer, skilled craftsman, merchant, warrior, priest, academic, or nobleman. Our social status is probably... We want to be a warrior. Jazir has grand ambitions of becoming a warrior. He wants to do mercenary work. Um... However, he's actually a, a manual laborer. That's what he's been in the past. Um, has he committed crimes? I've never committed a crime. I've never been arrested. 
write down a long list of convictions. <laughs> yeah, let's write down a long list of convictions. Actually, no. I mean, well, you know, if you're really filling out forms, he'd totally lie and say, oh, no, no, I've never, I've never committed any crimes, but uh, I'm curious to see what this does for us if we write down a long list of convictions. Maybe it means we'll start with a bounty. In which case, oh no, we're gonna we're gonna pretend that he lies on the immigration form because I don't want to start the game with a bounty. That'd just be a pain in the bum. Um, what job did you hold? Uh, farm laborer, miner, hunter, piecework. Uh, well, none of the above, really. I guess. Go with piecework then. What is your financial situation? We're pretty poor, really. You know, scraped together what money he had. He, he had sort of like um when he left his his, his job as you know, you know co-owner of, of of a shipping company with his brother Sphere, kind of left with his chunk of the money. But then he since then he's kind of fritted all of it away in his travels. He's sort of blown the entire amount of cash he had. So at this point he's pretty poor. And our point of entry to Cyrodiil is going to be Leowen. Uh, we are not afflicted by any diseases. Brilliant. I think we're ready to go. Uh, let's drop a little, little quick save. There is a slight delay every time I do quick saves. I don't think that used to be a thing in the past. I think that's another Windows 10-ism, unfortunately. It's really biz I've had to, I'll talk about it later, but I've had so many issues with this game since I've gone into Windows 10. All right. You rest in the bed, and then that will bring us to the beginning of the game. Deliver the amulet. Yep, yep, yep. We had a weird dream about the emperor, and we don't care. Be gone. We're probably not doing the main quest, folks. I'll, I'll spoil that for you right now. Horse armor. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, don't care. Frost. Yep, yeah, don't care. I thought I disabled this DLC, if I'm honest, actually, but apparently I didn't. Dunbar. Yep, yeah, don't care. Any more? <laughs> Any more? Just gonna take a sip of my tea right now. No, I think we're good. I'm drinking some some very sugary sweet chai today because I figured that was probably appropriate for a character from elsewhere. Anyway, so here we are. We're on the docks in Leowen. We've just got off the boat. Um, don't have a lot to our name. Kind of looks a little bit flustered, doesn't he, with his ears back like that. <laughs> but there he is. There's our man, Jazir. Uh, let's have a look. How, how did his, oh, his attributes are not very good? Probably because he needs to eat or drink something. I have a mod, which means we have to eat, drink, and sleep uh, regularly in order to not have our attributes and stuff drained. So we ended up with Blade 35, Block 30, Blunt 30, Alchemy 25, Destruction 25, Light Armor 30, and Sneak 30. Not bad. And of course an honorable mention goes to Hand to Hand, because we are a Khajiit. We are inherently better at Hand to Hand. I consider going with a Hand to Hand character, but I, I, Hand to Hand's not very good in Oblivion, frankly. It's a bit boring. Um, Alright, cool. Very nice. Very nice, very nice. Surprised we start with 10 heavy armor, actually. Really? And obviously we've got a little booster acrobatics as well, but... Yeah. Anyway. Very nice. No factions. Very few accomplishments. 57 max health. 83 max magicka. Level 1! Oh, we're so puny. Especially with the mods I've got installed, we're going to be very puny. Actually, I need to make, check in on the difficulty. Yeah, I'm going to lower this just a little bit. Now you might think, oh, you were lowering the difficulty below 50. Yeah, trust me, it's, it's the mods I have installed will more than make up for that. Uh, right, so here we are in Leowin. What's that, wanted poster? Well, as long as it's not our face on it, we don't really care. Admiral Cosmos' Tavern. Now, the, sh the thing is, there should be a, a sack here with our belongings in it. That's how the alternate start by ship mod works. You fill out those forms and it gives you appropriate belongings depending on your background. Unfortunately, however, I've tested this before and it seems to be the case again. The uh, the sack is missing. Which I guess I have no choice but to role players. Someone stole it. I guess he was getting off the ship. He pop popped his sack of belongings down, then realized he'd forgotten something, went back on the ship to go get it. And when he came back, someone had pinched his sack. So uh, we have nothing, absolutely nothing. We have no gold, 
We have nothing but these travellers' clothes, which look suspiciously like leather armour, but they're not, as you can see. Um, and an iron dagger, and just a few bits and bobs here, I think. We've got a book about Elsewhere. It must be one of his favourite books that he's read over the years. He went back onto the ship to go get it. And, uh, yeah. Well, here we are. Can I, can I dump this, by the way, by any chance? No, it doesn't look a can. It's a quest item. Ugh, oh, how annoying. We've got three empty canteens, at least, which we can fill with water, or wine, or beer, or mead, or whatever. You can fill them with alcohol if you like. You need to find barrels for that, though, but, like, big kegs and stuff, not these little barrels. Or, or a well. If you can find a well that hasn't been poisoned, or a fountain occasionally, any of those work. In fact, I th we, won't, we probably won't be going into any Oblivion Gates in this playthrough, but apparently I think you can use the blood fountains in those to fill up the, the canteen as well, according to the mod description, which amuses me. Ah, oh, here we go. Here we go. I don't think, hello, Mr. Guard. Yeah, I don't think anyone will mind too much if I just siphon off a little bit of... Oh, it's empty. Well, I won't do. What about this one? Wine! Lovely! We've arrived in Cyrodiil, and within five minutes we're getting pissed. You can get drunk. There is a drunk effect if you drink too much booze with the mods. Luckily, I, th I think we can get away with, like, two sips of the canteen before we it starts to kick in. Slightly hungry, slightly thirsty, and somewhat tired. Yeah. No, I'm not going to drink anymore for now. I still want. I don't want Jazir to get completely smashed. Um, yeah, I'm looking around right now, seeing like is, is, is my sack of belongings anywhere here? But no, it doesn't look like it. Uh, as I said, I, I did test it beforehand. And that's how I know it would go missing. And uh, before you wonder, yeah, I actually used the console to no clip through all the terrain and stuff to see if it had spawned inside something. And now it just seems to be completely gone. It's missing entirely, unfortunately. So never mind. Uh, right. Well, for one thing, right now it's raining. It's raining, and Jazir hates the rain because he's a Khajiit. He gets his all, he gets his fur all wet. He doesn't like water in general, really. Um, he, I'm going. This is going to be a role play. Let's play. If that wasn't obvious from the intro, but um, generally speaking, he's going to want to do everything in his power to avoid swimming, which is, I know, quite ironic for someone who used to be a sailor. But there you go. Um. He, he, he's going to try and avoid swimming as much as possible. We've come to the wettest town in Cyrodiil for that, which is just delightful. Um, and uh, he hates the rain as well. Like, uh, given the option, he'll wait inside for the rain to stop normally before going out because he doesn't like water. Doesn't like it at all. He can swim if the, the occasion demands it, but he doesn't like doing it. It takes you ages to get dry when you're covered in fur. Right, well, the question is what now? Obviously, we need to find some work and pretty sharpish because we've got no money at all. And it's not like we can just go around stealing stuff because there's. What on earth are we going to sell it to? Because, of course, in Oblivion, merchants won't buy stolen goods by default, and I don't have any f kind of funny mod that changes that, so. Barrel's empty. Seems to be broken. Oh dear. So right as it stands right now, oh boy, that was an auto save. I think yeah, I have a mod that does drops periodic auto saves. However, there is a brief freeze every time it happens, um, which always makes me clench slightly because uh, it feels like the game's about to crash. Hello, cat. Hello, brother. How are you doing? I see you do not mind the rain as much as I do, clearly. Otherwise, you would be inside. We could drop into the chapel, I suppose. See if they'll uh, spare us a bit of charity. I am a poor, lonely Khajiit who has no money. I wish to... Do you have arms for the poor? Oh, great, a Dunma. That's a great start. I'm Avras Aris. I'm the priest of Zenithar at the Leowin Chapel. I'm just realising how loud this music is and how quiet his voice is. Good grief. Voice volume. Crank that up to maximum. Music volume. Turn it down a smidge. This is a very loud music track, actually. Um, can you tell me much about Leowin? I used to be a priest of the Tribunal Temple in Craigenwall. After the collapse, 
I drifted for a while until I joined the chapel. The beggars and the wicked thieves guild still trouble me. I wish the nine divines offered charity and comfort to the poor, like the temple did. Does this mean you are going to give Jazir some free money? Stop talking. That's what I thought, you goddamned, goddamned hypocrite. <laughs> uh, altar of the Nine. Rejoice through faith, your afflictions are banished. I think Jazir is not a particularly godly man, but uh, I think for the most part he'd probably follow the gods of elsewhere, which are very, very similar to the Nine Divines, in fairness. They're basically the same, just with different names. Experiencing a little bit of weird lag with my controls, I just noticed. And that seems to have gone now. That's okay. Maybe just because the game's a bit laggy. Yeah, better cities will do that, I'm afraid. I am using better cities, as you can probably tell. This is not vanilla, Leowin. Um, not great for your uh, stability and whatnot is better cities. or Nor is unique landscapes, which I'm also using. But uh, I've come to take them for granted over the years because I just enjoy them so much. Hmm. Fighters Guild, you say? Well, Jazir will have to check this out. Although apparently it's trespassing. <laughs> I am busy, so if you will excuse me. Hello. Oh, he's just gone out. We're looking for recruits. Interested? Uh, if you're paying well, yes. If you're interested, see Velena Danton in Coral, or Azan in Anvil, or Burz Grokash in Shadenhall. Ah. Alright, well, that's good. We've been being given the runaround straight away. So let's have a look at our map. So we're in Leowin. Uh, that's elsewhere next door to us, as you can see. I do have the elsewhere mod. In fact, it's, it's like a two-part mod of the elsewhere and Equinum mod, which does like the top half of elsewhere. And then I have the Pelotine mod, which does the bottom half, and they combine together. So uh, I think... I don't remember if there's Corinth down here. I think there's... There's supposed to be some other settlements down here, but I don't know if they're included on this map because the map is a separate mod that I think possibly predates the Pelotine half of the mod, so I don't know. Um, but we may well end up visiting elsewhere at some point in this Let's Play. In fact, possibly quite soon, actually, because if we want to go to Anvil, because he just said we need to go to Shadenhall or Anvil, both of which are quite far away. Uh, but if we wanted to go to Anvil, and considering we can't afford a boat to get there right now, um, we'd have to go... The quickest way would actually be to go through elsewhere. So, along the Alabaster Road. Up this way, pa through, through Orcrest and King's Walk. Past Riverhold. And then just sort of maybe cut cross-country to Skingrad. And then, yeah, there you go. What's that? Oh, that's the Aura Request, isn't it? Join Fighters Guild. Let's put that as our active quest instead. Um, so, yeah... I'm not going to fast travel as much as possible. In fact, actually, if we go via Dune here, there's a, there's a road that actually leads slightly through through Valenwood, which we could take. It would get us to Skingrad. That might be a good idea. Anyway, uh, yeah. We might be going through elsewhere pretty soon, then. Perhaps Jazir's feeling nostalgic. He wants to go see the old country. Top across the border here from Leowin. Well, uh, in the meantime, though, in the immediate, like, right now, we need some money. Hello, dear the scallywag. One more coin, and I can get a pair of shoes. Yeah, I know the feeling, friend. I don't have one to give you. Blessings upon you, upon me. Who's this? Savi, Counts Mage and Castle Healer, your servant. What can you tell me about Leowin? I have been happy enough in the Count's service, but I am not so happy about his lovely wife and her Nibbanean advisor. Lady Alicia is uncomfortable with Khajiit ways, and Argonian ways, and Dunmer ways. She is only comfortable with pure white bread Nibbaneans. Oh, she is racist then, this is what you are saying. Oh. Jazir understands. Blackwood Company Hall, eh? Maybe these guys are hiring. Hello! Ah, it's a sword you have there. Hi. Commander Ja Fassir, 
your servant. I am second in command of the Blackwood Company. The company provides expert jihad for selected customers. Very discreet. Jihad, you say? Beg pardon. It is a word from the Tagra, meaning warrior for hire. In Tagra, the word is vaguely disreputable. Such a fighter fights for gold rather than for clan or main. Of course, the Blackwood Company is mercenary in the Western sense. A reliable professional contractor for military services. These are all things that uh, Jazir would obviously know. Pax Siege, huh? Excuse me. In the Imperial tongue, it means roughly clan chair, the seat of the clan patriarch. In the company, we use the term to mean leader, but it carries the sense of wise father, concerned for the welfare of the whole family. Hmm. What can you tell us about Leowin? Blackwood refers in part to Blackwood Forest, but it also carries a reference to the Thogat of charcoal warriors of Khajiit tradition. See, rumors? Anvil is all in an uproar. First the chapel attacked, now the prophet ranting about the end of the world. Goodness me, that sounds Stop very God. bad. Especially since I am going to Anvil, probably, now? unless you guys want to hire me. Lieutenant Rana, Blackwood Company. My duties are primarily administrative. They keep me busy here in the Leowin barracks. Yeah, can't help but notice none of you seem to want to hide, Jazir. I am Gil, Sergeant of Sharpshooters, Blackwood Company. Here, I train our skirmishing specialists. You know, perhaps, that Argonians may be gifted spellcasters. Mm-hmm. Brodress has been teaching Fighters Guild members how to better use heavy armor. Odd for a buzzer, but he's apparently good at it. That'll be the probably... I assume that's the guy we bumped into on his way out of the Please Fighters Guild up. earlier. Okay. Um, hall basement. Can't go in there, apparently. Hello, Steel Fang. Good to see you. Have you seen Itar making trouble? Anyone else around here worth talking to? How about you? What is it? Vitam Z. We already talked to you or not? What do you want? No, we haven't. Have you been near Rosentia Galenis' house recently? Smells horrible. Like she left some meat out to spoil. Rosentia Galenis, you say? Every time I pass by that woman's house, I hear odd animal noises and smell a foul odor. Maybe she's caring for some sick pet or something. Whatever it is, she should clean up her act. It's surprising that a wealthy woman like that would let her property fall into such disarray. Hmm. I'm through well, talking to you. Jazir finds that most interesting. Any weapons that we can't have. Well, it doesn't seem like these guys are hiring. So, we're going to head out of here. And with nothing else to do, I think maybe Jazir is going to go find this Rosentia Galenus' house. Check out what's going on there. The guy mentioned she was wealthy. So maybe she's got some sort of problem she needs dealing with. Like, maybe she's got, got to take some trash to the tip or something. Maybe, maybe, maybe she'll pay him to do something about that. So, sounds like a good idea because right now we have, as I said, no money at all, gold zero. So, Jazir desperately needs some money right now, not only to get a room for the night at the inn, but also just to buy some food. So, um, I'm going to assume he probably asked the Blackwood guy where the house is. 
And that's how he knows where it is. So it's gonna be down that down that street here, right? Hello, what are you? Afternoon. I'm Singor. I'm the captain of the Leowen Neighborhood Watch. Actually, captain, president, vice president, secretary, treasurer, and sergeant at arms. We're a small, select organization of crime fighters. We're going after the crimes and criminals the guard overlooks. Oh, you are vigilantes, I see. There's crime everywhere. I'm always on the lookout. Uh, we're always on the lookout. No crime shall go undetected. That's our motto. Mm hmm You mean that's your motto? <laughs> I'm through talking to you. Yeah, I'm through talking to you as well, stupid Bosma. Right. Ooh. Okay, we're, just, we're saving, we're saving. It's not crashing, it's saving. It's, we're good, we're fine. Okay, this is the place. Knock, knock. Hello. Okay, this is not what this one was expecting. Hello, scamp friends. You are not attacking me. Help me. These stupid scamps are driving me crazy. Um, Jazir can help you if you if you wish. Hopefully for some reward. Oh, thank you. I had a feeling buying that Daedric staff would be trouble. Now I'm paying for it with more than just some gold. Daedric staff, you say? A few weeks ago. A spell sword was passing through Leowin and heard that I like to buy curiosities. He wanted to sell the staff you see me carrying. I eagerly bought it, knowing the value of Daedric relics. In fact, I was a bit suspicious when he sold it so cheap. His loss, my gain, I figured. After examining it for a bit, I noticed a small word carved on it in runes. Using a book from my library, I translated it. The word was nonsense. However, when I spoke it and held the staff, four scamps suddenly appeared. I thought I was done for. Strangely, they all just stood there. It didn't take long before I realized they were following me. I couldn't be seen in town with scamps following, so I decided to discard the staff. I can't explain it. But somehow, I can't compel myself to actually let it go. This staff is obviously cursed. Now I'm stuck with it. So, uh, where, where does this one fit in? I need you to get over to the Mages Guild and talk to a good friend of mine, Alvis Uvenum. She's the only one in town that I trust. I was able to get a message to her earlier, but I've yet to get a reply. If I go, then the scamps will follow and my secret will be revealed to all. Hmm, okay. Alv should be able to help rid me of this staff. We play cards at the Three Sisters often and are old friends. Seek her advice. Anything else to say? Everyone in town knows about my hobby. Collecting unusual examples of the arcane crafts. My husband left me quite comfortable, bless his cinders. What will I do with my collection of curiosities when I go? Donate them to the castle, of course. You say this like it is the most obvious thing in the world. But okay. Um, Rivers? I can't make up my mind about the prophet in Anvil. Is he truly a holy man, or just a lunatic exploiting the tragedy at the Chapel of Debella? Hmm, Jazir thinks it is probably the latter. We're not going to be doing Knights of the Nine in this Let's Play, folks, just so you know. Just so we're clear. The beastly little creatures are nasty, smelly, noisy, and wrecking my beautiful house. I must be rid of them. I can't let people know I have scamps in here, or they'll think I've taken to Daedra worship. Try explaining that to the town guard. <laughs> Or the neighborhood watch. <laughs> Alice is a practiced researcher. She's sure to have some good information for you. Okay, I will go. Yeah, uh, ooh. 
interesting paintings you have here. Right, Mages Guild, let's go. Let's hear anyway, yeah, we're not doing Knights to Nine, so we can safely ignore most of that dialogue. People will talk about it, Jazir will not be interested. Uh, right. In fact, the only reason I have installed, I think, is because some of the mods I have uh, need, you know, they require it, so. Ah, this looks like Mages Guild. Also trespassing for some reason. Weird. Hmm, busy place. Hello, hello, are you? Yeah, this is Alvus. Al 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 Alves? Alvis? Hello, this one wishes to speak with you. Poor Rosentia. She's been trapped in her house for days. How did you know? Frankly, the smell gave you away. You must have stepped in. Well, let's just say something that isn't pleasant. Just be sure and keep this quiet. If the other mages even knew that I was involved with Rosentia's new guests, I could get kicked out of the guild. Uh, okay, well, you have a lot of dialogue topics. I'm glad she was finally able to get someone over here. I've been gathering all the research I could on her... Um, little problems, shall we say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, scams. Oh, yes. Don't bother trying to kill one of them. As soon as you do, another will take its place. It's endless. Quite the curse, eh? Shea Gorth certainly has a sick sense of humor. Okay, so what about the staff then? Doing a bit of digging, I'm afraid Rosenti has been stuck with the staff of the Everscan. Nasty bit of fun by Shea Goroth, I'd say. The only way she can be rid of it is if someone willingly accepts it. It can't be discarded in any other manner. No one would buy that thing once it's activated like it's been. The only chance is to return it to its original resting place, Dark Fathom Cave. Inside the cave, there's rumored to be a shrine to Shea Gorath. That's where the staff can finally be dropped, and the scamps should remain behind. I also learned that the staff makes the owner move much slower than normal. I suppose it's another way the creator upped the annoyance factor. Please, bring Rosentia this information at once. And if you can, help her. I think she's about to crack under the pressure, poor thing. Mm-hmm. All right. Send Rosentia my All regards. If there's anything Story else I can do, please let me know. Who could let me have this apple? I can do without it. Jazeera is very hungry. Could, could I? No, okay. I will go. Oh. All right. Pardon me. Uh, uh, right. Starting to think. Maybe I should f have a look around, see if we can find some barrels or crates, see if there's some food in them. Because, uh, yeah, we just getting pretty freaking hungry now. Can we get dry with drinking the rest of that wine without getting sloshed? I think so. To open the inventory to get this to come up. Yeah, slightly thirsty still. I mean, hang on a minute. I, I think I think this is a thing you can do with this. If I just point upwards at the sky and press E, <laughs> we can fill it with rainwater, and I think we can drink the rainwater as well. There we go. We're hungry and tired now, and that's it. Okay, good. Good afternoon. Hello, doggy. What? What? I couldn't tell you what mod it is that adds the, the, the dogs and cats around the place. Um, I have Mascar's overhaul installed and Skira's overhaul, which, oddly enough, do actually both work together. Um, but Mascar's overhaul adds so much stuff that if, if in doubt, if I don't recognise something, it's probably from that. But where is... I've gotten lost. Where is Rosentia Galenis' house? It's, uh, it's about this way, isn't it? And who's that lunatic running along there? He says, running along.
What is it, citizen? Okay. Oh, there they go. Looks like a Argonian, I think, or something? They're in a hurry, whoever they are. Hello, I have returned. These scamps are making my home smell like a bar. I was afraid you wouldn't come back. Uh, yes, I have information about the Daedric staff. Oh, please, I beg you. Take this staff to Dark Fathom Cave and get rid of it and the scamps forever. I can't fight, and who knows what's guarding the shrine. Plus, do you know how dirty caves are? It'll ruin anything I wear. Do this for me, and I'll reward you with another one of my curios I picked up a few years ago. A valuable ring. Are you ready? No, oh, valuable ring, you say? Well, uh, um, uh, not just yet. Uh, this one needs to prepare first. I understand. No need to jump headlong into a dangerous situation. But do hurry. I can only keep it a secret for so long. Okay. Please consider my... So the thing is... Aha! Okay, so we have found out where Dark Fathom Cave is. She did foolishly tell us where it is. So here's the thing. Jazeera isn't going to accept the uh, the staff from her and therefore the curse until he's actually been to Dark Fathom Cave and had a little look in. Peek, peek in there and see what what's what. Because, uh, frankly... How rude. Uh, frankly, he's not he's not going to accept a, a staff with a bunch of scams if, if if the cave is full of like monstrous demons that are going to immediately one shot you know one shot kill him basically. So, okay, that is a shortcut across the other side of the town, but it would involve swimming. So no. Afternoon. Oh, this rain is horrible. Let's go this way. Actually, which which gate do we actually need to go out of? It's it's over here, isn't it? I mean, especially since all we have right now is no armor and an iron dagger, so <laughs> you know, gotta kind of be uh, sensible about this, haven't we? I'm looking around right now for any loose barrels or crates that we can. Go rifling through without anybody noticing. Aha, here we go, this'll do. Not typically given to theft is Jazir. He's not really a thief character, but Ooh, trousers. Uh sometimes you know, desperate times call for desperate measures. We got some gold finally, hurrah. Pick. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, um, shears look like junk, but they're actually vaguely useful in Masker's Overhaul, which I've got installed. You, you can actually shear sheep with them and sell the wool, or make the wool into clothes, I think. It adds a whole bunch of crafting stuff. Big old crafting system to the game. I don't know how much exactly we're going to interact with it. But uh, we, we will. To some extent, I'm sure. Oh, stealing from a beggar. All he has is a pair. Uh, no. Jazeera will find food elsewhere. It might not seem like it sometimes, but Jazeera does in fact have conscience. I haven't found any food, though. That's, that's the most irritating thing. Anything behind this this place? This is a shop, after all. Not really, no. Oh, curses. Oh, hello. This is a strange-looking plant. I've recovered a sprig of nern root. A plant ingredient this unusual must have value. Excellent. Perhaps I should bring it to an alchemist and find out a little more about it. An alchemist can be found in almost every city in Cyrodiil. Um... Uh, Except for Leowin. <laughs> I don't think there's an alchemy store here. Although I suppose I could probably take it to someone at the Mages Guild. Which might be a good idea. So there you go. Jazir's just found this Nern Root thingy and he's just like, Oh, this might be valuable. I should take this. 
effect. I think that's what he's going to do. He's going to take it to a, an alchemist as soon as we get back into town. Be like, hey, what, what are you going to give me for this? However, let's go check out Dark Fathom Cave first. Uh, also, I'm a little low on health right now. Uh, that's mostly because we're still really hungry and, and whatnot, so... Nothing I can do about that. Healing myself won't help. I will occasionally use the very minor healing spell. I'm just going to say that that's something that Jazir picked up somewhere. He doesn't have restoration skill, but, you know, he has this one little healing charm he can do. Because uh, I don't think I can delete it from, from the spell menu, unfortunately. Once it's there. And also, uh... Oh, hello. <laughs> Nothing going on here. You carry on about your day. Repair hammer, yes. A broom. Scales? No, no. Shoes! And an outfit. A uh, fresh outfit. That wouldn't be bad. There's a dude running around with a hammer over there. What on earth? Okay. That was weird. As long as they're not coming after us, I guess we're fine. Oh, Jizir needs food. I'm guessing this boat's from Skyrim, judging by the look of it. Oh gosh, okay, yeah, the docks are quite extensive, aren't they? Taking those clothes, not to, uh... Not to sell, because they're stolen, we can't sell them to anyone, but just, just to wear, mostly. Jazir has a taste for the finer things in life, on the rare occasions that he can afford them. So he'd like to have lots of spare items of clothing to wear. If it's an option. Pair hammers would be a good idea as well. I don't. He doesn't have the armor skill, but some basic maintenance for his armor and weapons when he gets some will be a thing he does. Oh, no food anywhere. I need to find a food barrel. Lots and lots of shears. A torch. Ooh, yes, please. Oh, here's some food. Although, this is going to be like magical food that I can't take, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> Apparently there's nobody here, though. What time is it? 7pm. Uh, cloth and a quilt. Is it? No, it's Mondas. I was going to say, is it a Sunday? There's nobody, nobody at the market? <gasps> food! Yes! Give the food! Cheese, pear, rice. Prefers meat. Given the option, because, you know, he is a, effectively a feline. But uh, literal beggars cannot be choosers, of course. <gasps> Jackpot. Okay, we're going to be living off pears for a while, folks. <laughs> Ooh, another armor's hammer. Why not? I'd like some more lockpicks and torches, actually. Torches, especially. Although, being a Khajiit, we do have the. Um... Uh oh. Okay, no, sometimes it takes a minute to open the map. I think it's because I've got the modded map with the extra stuff on here. It takes a hot minute to load in sometimes. Um, we do have. Uh, well, we have Eye of Fear, which is useful. It's a greater power, but our lesser power is Eye of Night we can use to not see in the dark for 30 seconds. Um, bit ele inelegant, really, having to cast a power to see in the dark as a Khajiit, but what are you going to do, I suppose? We can also feign death as well, that's a thing. We can whistle, which calls follower. I think it's specifically for horses, actually, the whistling thing. Um, if we have a horse, we can whistle to make it follow us. Um, we can also feign death, which is a thing that's added by... I want to say Masker's Overhaul, I don't actually remember for sure though, but it basically allows us to, um, you know, hide and pretend to be dead or whatever. 
It's basically a way of getting out of encounters we stumble into that are way too high level for us and we can't run away from, you know. Oh, pumpkin, yes. Okay, I think we've probably nicked enough food for now. What is this? Leo in harbor storage. Is there a, a tavern somewhere? We can hide out in front of the, the Mermaid Inn, perfect. Not seeing much business today. The docks are weirdly deserted, aren't they? If you're looking for trouble, you're getting very warm. Okay, your tune's changed. Greetings! We may not have the cleanest or the driest place in town, but I'll be damned if you can find better food or drink. Do you get many customers? I sure do, she says in an empty room. <laughs> I'm right on the dock. I get plenty of hungry and thirsty sailors through here every night. The only problem is dealing with them when they were drunk a bit too much. So it probably stands to reason that, that actually, that Jazir has come here before. She might not remember him, but I'm sure he's actually been here before. We have a whole six gold to our name right now. Amazing. Not going to sell one of my canteens. Stop talking. Just going to... Can I have a seat here by the fire and, and, and warm myself up? Is that okay? Oh! Keep walking. Wow, they really don't like me, do they? Is this because I'm a Khajiit? I've never played as a Khajiit in Oblivion before. It's part of the reason I'm doing this. Does all the NPCs... Are they all racist towards Khajiits in this game and I've just never noticed before? <laughs> Goodness me. It's not like I have a high infamy score or anything. Right. Uh, oh, lovely stolen food. Except some of it isn't, oddly enough. Let's eat the stolen pears first, I guess. <laughs> Consume the evidence. And a raw onion, because why not? A lettuce. We've, all, we've gone vegan, apparently. Slightly hungry and tired. Alright, we'll have a, um, a carrot then. I just want a carrot as well. Right, I think we're good. Have a sip of wine. Why not? All right, now we're just tired. Uh, you may have noticed as well in my powers menu, there's a camping thing. If we buy ourselves a little tent and bedroll, we can use that to set up a camp. A camp in the wilderness, which will be obviously very useful, considering I have a mod that forces us to sleep. Unfortunately, we couldn't possibly afford that right now, so... Okay, the, the evening's wearing on now. It's gonna get start start getting quite dark soon, I imagine. But let's go. Even though it's raining horribly, let's go and check out Dark Fathom Cave because, under normal circumstances, what what Jazir would do right now is is go straight back to the inn and probably stay there until tomorrow and hope that it stops raining. But unfortunately, he really is that desperate right now. He needs money. He couldn't. He literally can't even afford a bed for the night right now. So, and unfortunately, in this game, you can't just sort of you know fall asleep on a park bench. So, you have to have an actual bed. Don't have okay, right? This is the place. Time to have a look around. Sneak, shall we? And quick save as well. Okay, doesn't look too dark in here actually. actually our best weapon right now is going to be flare. We also have cold touch and shocking touch, but that involves us getting close to the enemy. I think flare is actually going to be really useful. Those giant teeth. That doesn't look very nice. Yep. It's down here then. The place seems deserted. Which is not really what Jizia was expecting. Oh, hello. have light and something moving around. Yeah, it's a scamp. Hello there. Oh, 
Well, if it's just scams, we'll probably be okay. Let's see if we can get a sneak attack on you. There we go. Stunted scam. Let's just carefully sneak over here. See what's going on. Someone's lit a fire. Alright. Well, it doesn't seem like anything Jazir can't handle, so... Oh, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Seven gold, a lockpick, and some nightshade. Why not start collecting alchemy ingredients, actually? Why the devil not? Okay. Ooh, hello. where did you guys come from? Oh, they must have wandered in while I was... Oh, Jesus, that was... Okay. <laughs> that took me by surprise. Hello, guys. Oh, there's three of them. Oh, this is not good. <laughs> is there another way out of this cavern? Possibly if I go around this way. Oh, that was that was not good. Was that a scamp or was that something nastier? I I only caught a glimpse of it for a second. It looked like it could have been a hunger. I hope not. Speaking of hunger. Let's see if we can get one of these guys. Oh, damn it! <laughs> I hit the side of the... No! Oh, God. Here we go. Ah. Whew, okay, we're good. Uh, okay, now I can't see anything, which means it's time for... We're going to need a hotkey this, aren't we? Uh, let's set it to eight for now. What do you guys got? Scam skin. Yeah, we'll cut off a bit of their scam skin to sell. I get back into town. We probably have enough money now to stay the night, which is what I think we're going to do. Now then, let's see. This place over here looks hopefully affordable. Spare a coin for the infirm. I'm afraid, my friend, I literally cannot spare a single coin. I think I have only enough for... Well, maybe I can spare one. I can eat for a day with a single coin. Here you go. Thank you, kind sir. Nobody ever said Jazir was not charitable. When he can afford to be. Can it make words? Uh, right. With Sedutsi. Welcome, stranger, to the Five Claws. Food and beds, cheap and good. But most of all, your hostess promises always clean. With Sedutsi gives you her guarantee. Everything clean, always, or you do not pay. Okay, the question is, how much is it going to cost? There's a bed for you if you need it. A mere ten gold for the night. 
Yes, you are my favorite innkeeper. I will take it. Very well. Room number two, just near the entrance. If you need food or drink, let me know. Oh, we've got plenty of both, thankfully. Although... What can I interest you in? You wouldn't happen to have any... No, okay. He was hoping for a nice juicy steak, perhaps. Oh, you've got a skillet, though. And scissors. Okay, now scissors are important and skillets are important. Uh, so skillet... Uh, these are both, both from um, Maskers Overhaul, but... The skillet will allow us to cook meat that we find. And possibly other stuff too, but mostly I think it's just for cooking meat, which is good. Um, the scissors are for if we find um, random bits of cloth, we can use the scissors to cut them up and turn them into bandages. And bandages are an alternative way of healing yourself in this game, um, as opposed to just potions or spells. Um, that are, can actually be really, really useful because they restore a lot of health, but you have to. it takes a while for, the, for the, your character to apply the bandage. And it can get interrupted if you get attacked and stuff like that. So they're not very good for in the middle of combat, but... Anyway, um, I don't have enough gold for either, but we will bear that in mind. So much dirt and so little time. Pause, but a moment, and you'll be drowned in the tide. Trash, mud, dust. We all love Count Marius and his father before him. R.K. bless his soul. Such a fine young man. And now, his new wife, so beautiful, so fine, and wise, oh yes. The new Lady Leowin is daughter to Countess Ariana Valga, County Coral. And so she knows just how the county should be run. Lady Alicia tells Count Marius exactly what to do, and he does as she says. But listen to me. Cawing and chattering like an old fish crow. <laughs> I think just is getting the impression that uh, Witsudutsi might be, uh, well, uh, how, how to put this? Um, uh, uh, what? A few altars short of a chapel. Um, but I think he finds it very amusing, so he's going to continue the conversation. Everyone's talking about the assassination, of course. Here, take my copy of the new Black Horse Courier. Go ahead, keep it. Now, this is actually the first that I think Jazeera's has heard of this. He, he, this probably happened while he was on, on, on the ship on his way here. But yes, the Emperor has been murdered. Leave me He's alone. a bit crazy for dogs from one Okay, well, this is our room here. Or, no, this one. This is our room. Okay. They say that the priests and priestesses of the chapel of Dibella have all been murdered. Why don't we read this? I wish I could... Oh, I can get rid of this. Okay. Horse armor, no. Ugh, no. We have faction ratings. Oh, yeah, that's a thing. Um, there are factions in the game with, with Mascot's overhaul. Um, we've got the Imperial Legion, Orsinium, Hammerfell, Skyrim, Morrowind, Black Marsh, Elsewhere, Valenwood. So there are like factions of, they're kind of like bandits, but like they have faction relations to you and stuff like that. That can be positive or negative um, based on your actions throughout the game. Um, I think it's supposed to basically just represent the fact that now Tamriel is in a state of basically chaos, what with the Emperor dead and whatnot. There are various factions around the place that are sort of trying to take advantage of of, of the situation. And uh, if we go to the, towards the borders of the different provinces with uh, from Cyrodiil, what we'll encounter... Um, you know, soldiers slash bandits slash whatever from these different places. So, we haven't run into any of them yet, but it'll probably happen sooner or later. Um, right, assassination. A Black Horse Courier, Special Edition, Emperor and Heirs Assassinated, Elder Council named as Regents. Emperor Uriel Septon VII is dead at the age of 87, having ruled Tamriel for 65 years. He was killed by assassins unknown. At the same time, in separate locations, the late Emperor's three sons and heirs, Crown Prince Geldol, 56, Prince Enman, 55, Prince Abel, 53, were slain by other assassins. An investigation into the identity and motives of the assassins is underway, but the Elder Council, Imperial Guard and Blades Guard have forbidden the publication of reports and rumours concerning the event until further notice. By ancient precedent, the Elder Council rules the Empire until a new Emperor is crowned. No direct heirs survive, and the Council has proposed no list of candidates. 
Chancellor Ricardo, Imperial Battle Mage, speaking for the Elder Council, presented an appeal to the Empire citizens for calm and asked what, that the people remember the Emperor, his sons, and the Elder Council in their prayers. Emperor Uriel's early reign was marked by peace and prosperity. The Empress Cola Voria bore him three healthy sons, was a loving companion to the Emperor, and a great favourite of the people. However, the Emperor and the Empire suffered terribly during the Imperial Simulacrum 3E, 389-399, when he was held captive in oblivion while the usurper Jagathan assumed his appearance and ruled in his stead. This is the events of Arena, the first Elder Scrolls game, obviously. Uh, Emperor Uriel was finally rescued and restored by the imposter, and the imposter defeated by the agency of the sorceress Rhea Silmane and her shadowy protege. Um, but the affairs of the Empire were in great disorder, and the Empress Colavoria, exhausted by her ordeal, withdrew from public life. The decades following the restoration were once again peaceful and prosperous, but increasing political tensions among the petty states of northwest Tamriel finally erupted in the wars of the Iliac Bays. There's only one Iliac Bay, as far as I know, but whatever. <laughs> Resulting in the establishment of the modern borders of Daggerfall, Sentinel, Wayrest, and Orsinium, and culminating with the remarkable events associated with the warp in the west. That's obviously from Daggerfall, the game. The latter years of the Emperor's reign have seen a flourishing of imperial influence in the provinces, and with the fortunate resolution of the religious wars in the Vardenfell crisis from Morrowind, um, and with the wise and firm guidance of King Helsith and his mother, Queen Baron Zaya, an extension of high imperial culture even into the more remote parts of Morrowind. The Emperor's murder and the murder of his three sons is a terrible crime and a great tragedy for the Empire. Battle Major Kato assures us that all the resources of the Elder Council, the Legions, the Guard... Uh, the Arcane University and the Imperial Battle College are being employed to bring the assassins to justice. But in the meantime, the greatest tribute we citizens can offer to the memory of our beloved Emperor is to go earnestly and diligently about our daily affairs, honouring the life of the great Empire he loved so much and served so faithfully for so long. There we go. Interesting, isn't it? The Imperial Battle College is not a location that exists in the game in Vanilla. I don't know if it's a thing with the mods I have installed, but it doesn't exist in the vanilla game, I know that much. Right. Uh, mm, well, interesting news. On the one hand, oh dear, no poor Emperor. On the other hand, mm, Cyrodiil is in chaos. This means many opportunities for uh, someone with Jazir skills to make lots of money. Is he in here? Hello, who's... Go who the... Away, fool. There's no need Who are you? What are you doing in here? Get out! What? I'm Itar. Say, did you hear what that Argonian said? What's his name? Uh, you know who I'm talking about. He said any Argonian can kick any Khajiit's butt to breakfast any day of the week. <laughs> you believe that? I think he's wrong. I know Khajiit can kick Argonian butt. Anytime, anywhere. And you can tell everyone I said so. I give you five seconds to get out of my room. I'm through talking to you. Is all in an uproar. Stupid. Respect. One, two, three, four, five. Why is it everywhere Jazir goes, Jazir gets into trouble? It's not fair, he would not leave my room. <sighs> I am innocent. Oh well. Ladies and gentlemen, on that note, <laughs> I'll see you in the next episode when uh, Jazir has finally cooled off in the jail for the night. He got a bed for the night in the end, after all. Look, <laughs> it's just not the one he wanted. <laughs> Yeah. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. I hope you tune in for episode two of this when I upload it. And uh, yeah, give us a like, give us a follow, bell button, subscribe, blah, blah, whatever. You know, all the things that YouTubers usually tell you to do. Please do those things if you feel like I earned it. Uh, I have a Patreon as well, which I don't shill for very often. But uh, I do have a Patreon, which you can you can donate any any tiny amount towards you like in the pursuance of me making more of these videos it's much appreciated and with that i'll shut up and wave goodbye to you all thanks folks catch you in the next one toodaloo